James, I wanted to ask you, I mean, I know you kind of talked about this before, about how The Purge was initially sort of inspired by, um, uh, it, you know, the when you lived in Paris for a period of time. And I suppose that idea of like uh, an outsider's perspective looking yeah. at America. Um, but in this one, it kind of felt like this was very kind of, I mean, the, the whole sort of like tension between... Um, you know the the Mexican immigrants and the Americans. I felt very kind of looking America directly in the eye. Was that the case for you? Yeah, I think so, man. I think that the first one, as you said, I, I needed some, you know, of an American born Italian American. I think the perspective of living in Paris for a year just made me look at the country in a way that I wasn't looking at it before. Um, and that coupled with you know the the idea is actually based on something my wife said in a road rage incident with me, but. Coupling those two things together came up with this national holiday, uh, you know, to me was the most horrific, you know, a nihilistic concept ever. But yeah, the perspective definitely informed the first film, if not more than that. But this one, this one, I think, was informed by obviously current events two and a half years ago with the previous administration's policies going, you know, as to the border, the Mexican-American border, the wall. That and just, I guess it was also years of my own, you know, living in where I live in New York, race is such a, uh, it's such part of the fabric of everyday life. You know, you live in neighborhoods here where, especially when I was in Brooklyn too, you have black neighborhoods, Puerto Rican neighborhoods, white neighborhoods, Italian yeah, neighborhoods, yeah. Irish. and you break it down. It's not just white, white is Irish, Italian, Jewish. Everything's broken down into tribalistic ways. And it's just how you grow up. It's just, that's, that's the black neighborhood. That's the point. So Specifically here, I was I was trying to make that comment that I've heard so much. There's a conversation in the movie between Josh Lucas and uh, and um, and Kenosh where he says, you know, our cultural dis differences are we can't bridge them. We can't assimilate because we're too culturally different. This is a conversation I've had with people over and over. Yeah. again. I've heard. So, yeah, I think it's more of an insider's perspective. And the beauty of it, though, I think is I'm hoping the beauty of it, I should say, I hope it works, is that when I teamed up with Everardo as he came in on as, as director, he called me out on a lot of shit, to be quite honest. Not to be blunt, but he'd be like, dude, we wouldn't speak like that as Mexicans. We wouldn't talk that way about America. And I'd be like, okay, well, how would you, you know? And then we really had honest conversations about why a Mexican immigrant would come to America. What did they really think of America? And what did America think of them coming here? I think the, I think the combination of he and I coming together hopefully led to something uh, truthful about the process. Yeah, I mean, it's interesting because I know like chronologically speaking, this takes place after uh, election year and at the end of election year, there were all the at the at the end of the film, you saw the, the, the riots and stuff. And then obviously we had uh, January 6th. Yes. Um, I'm wondering, I mean, you know, the, the way the forever purge ends and I don't want to give it well I suppose I'm gonna to have to fucking give it away but um <laughs> the fact that no but I mean the, I, I think of like the handmaid's tale for example the fact that like people everyone just left America because it was like fuck it it's beyond saving I mean right. do you foresee I mean you were so accurate with election year I wonder do you fear that's gonna happen this my, that's my, my producer's fear is that he's like you got to stop predicting the future yeah <laughs> of course it's getting bad it's getting kind of a it's getting uh, scary to see if any of this comes true. God, I hope, I always say this, I, I jokingly say it, but now it's, I always say that I'm hope, I hope that I stop coming up with ideas because I don't want to, any of them to come true. And uh, because we, this was written two, two years ago. Yeah, and we sure. saw some things that parallel it, but yeah, you know, it's weird. This was supposed to be the end of the franchise, but now I came up with an idea about three months ago that can extend it into six, which is really flipping America upside down which God, I hope I'm wrong about without giving away the concept, but it would be the worst possible outcome to the current discord we're experiencing in society. So um, I don't know if I answered your question, Brian, on that one, but- No, 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 <laughs> yeah. that's, no that's, that's good. Um, I'm getting the wrap up, so I wanna ask you one final question. Yeah. I mean, do you, and I, I, I suppose be, be as brief or as long as you can be, but the purge feel, I mean, I know you kind of dealt with a thing of like murder tourists and stuff like that. I mean, do you honestly think the purge could work in any other country or do you see, would you foresee it being accepted in any other country, I guess? Because people are angry everywhere. Like. Well, that's what I was going to just say, dude. I think that it comes out of an angry citizenry, right? It's that's where it's, or it's, it, it started with a government, a government that's, you know, because it's so, it's socio in the, in the early films, I speak to that. It's a so, socioeconomic conceit. Yeah. You know that they're 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 selling to the 
the citizenry as as a rule, a psychological ruse that you become a better person if you release this anger, right? But that's bullshit. What it really is is if we can eliminate eliminate the the lower class people that we need to take care of, you know, uh, with medical housing, then we're saving ourselves an, uh, a ton of money. So it's just yeah. it's an economic conceit. So it starts there, but then the angry citizenry is what where the fuses lit, right? Because they're angry, they're not being served, so they go out and purge. So you're right. Can this take place outside of America? Yeah, I guess there's anger everywhere, right? We're seeing yeah. we're seeing some anger in different. Uh, I conceived it as an American conceit because it was my reaction to what I was seeing sure. here in the country. But I think you can start. It's weird because we were approached by Mexican TV, German TV, and British TV to try to conceive oh. of purges for other countries. This was in the beginning of COVID, and I came up with the seeds of it. You know, little things, but it all came from the seed of you said it. It had to start with the seed of anger, yeah. somewhere in the citizenry to have it bloom from there. Um, but we've, we've definitely discussed it as I, you know, TV wise to see maybe the, the real estate and TV, the 10 hours of TV could allow us to explore how that could happen somewhere else. You know, it's, uh, because, you know, as we know, American culture, you know, goes abroad often, right? Oh God. Yeah. Completely. Rap. And there was something I found interesting and like, wow, the worst part of American culture in this fictional world is the purge, right? What could be worse than that? So as rap and other forms of music and art has expanded across globally, it would be very sad to see a world where the purge began to spread. Um, but maybe in the future, dude, yeah, never know. You never know. Yeah, you never know. <laughs> yeah. Cool. All right. Thanks, man. Thank you, man. Thank you. Take care. Cheers. Mexico is opening its borders for the next six hours. Stop. We're in this together. Translate.